So I suppose firstly, huge congratulations to everyone today who has received an offer from UCC and the College of SET. Uh, our audience, our student audience are from Ireland, from the EU and lots of different international locations. And that's really important to us because you're going to hear from some of our students. It's a very inclusive environment here in CEFS, and it's really important that you're all on this together and that you're all getting the same support from us as well. OK, um, I suppose what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce the head of college, uh, Sarah Colishy, and she's just going to give a brief welcome from her perspective. You're also going to hear from different students that we have today and from some support staff. And I'm going to go through maybe some of the more boring aspects <laughs> of things at the webinar, but I suppose the more practical advice that you're looking for as well. OK, um, again, we'll be sharing a lot of kind of contact forms with a lot of extra information so that you know exactly some of the pointers that Gary will be given on accommodation will be listed there in the links i'll be sharing that document i'll be sharing my contact details but also there'll be admissions advice and things like that so you will have lots of different information so please make sure to save that document when it's being circulated as well okay uh, so without further ado i'll pass you over to our leader there sarah professor sarah quality and she's just going to give a brief welcome from the college of sis okay Thanks so much, Nessa. And it's just really wonderful to be here with you all today and um, welcome virtually to the College of Science, Engineering, Food Science and University College Cork. The first thing I'd like to say to you, like Nessa, is a huge congratulations on your offer. And secondly, thank you so much for your interest in our college, in our programmes and in coming to University College Cork. Um, I suppose the one thing I would say is that we have a wonderful diversity of programmes here in the college. Um, you have obviously been interested in what, what we do offer. And I suppose I want to say to you that when you come here to uh, study with us in the, in the college, you are going to have a really exciting, diverse experience in your programmes. I suppose the big issue is for us is that we are committed to having programs that are research led, research informed. What does that mean? The people that are going to be teaching you on the programs when you come to us are researchers, they are scientists, they are engineers. They're often world renowned scientists and engineers. They're at the top of their game in terms of their research and you will be experiencing that in your programs. So you can be assured that what you learn here with us in the college is cutting edge research, science and engineering. And that's going to be hugely beneficial for you um, when you leave us after the programme. The other thing about our programmes is that they are very much industry informed. We have huge um, industry engagement in our, in our programmes. So you will be assured that industry know what our programmes are and inform that those program offerings as well. And that has really been beneficial for our students and our graduates when they lead us, uh, leave us afterwards. I suppose ultimately, you know, our programs are uh, successful because we have wonderful students on them. And, I, and another element of this is when, when our students leave us, they not only become industry and research leaders, not just nationally, but internationally. And I'm hoping that we'll be able to tell you in due course about the amazing alumni that we have from UCC and from our College of Science, Engineering and Food Science and the leadership roles they go on to play, not just in Ireland, but globally. And we are incredibly proud of our students and of where they go after our, their time in UCC. But I suppose finally, all I want to say to you is that, you know, we're committed to the student experience. We want you to have a fantastic time when you're here with us here in UCC. That's our primary concern. So our, our staff are incredibly engaged and committed to the student experience. You will have access um, on a continual basis to those academics. You'll have a strong support system around you in the academic units you're in, but also in the wider university. And, and you'll see that this morning, even from a number of our participants who are here on the webinar as well. This is a whole university um, commitment to our students and making sure that when you come to us here in UCC and to Cork, that you have a fantastic time, because a big element of this is the experience, not just within the programmes, but externally as well. We have a fantastic campus, a beautiful campus here. You can see some of it behind NASA, but also we are in a fantastic small city 
where, you know, it's safe and where you'll have a wonderful time. So I suppose I'm really looking forward to welcome you in person to UCC when you arrive here after the summer and hearing about your journey to, to come here and join us. And I just want to say a huge thanks to everyone who has who is, is participating this morning, our contributors and you um, on an individual basis. Welcome to UCC and we'll see you very soon. Thanks very much, NASA. Thanks, Sarah. Appreciate it. Um, so, yeah, I'm just going to pass over, uh, Samia, if that's OK to you next. <laughs> I know you're busy. You're in your second week of industry placement at the moment, so you're quite busy. So I really appreciate you joining. Uh, today. So Sammy is going to talk a little bit about her student experience. She joined uh, UCC in the College of CEFs this year. Um, so without further ado, I'll pass over to you there. Thank you everyone for having me on, but thank you, Nessa. Uh, firstly, congratulations to all of the offer holders who are having great programs this year. So I myself, I did my master's in applied geosciences and had waited for two years to get on to board with this course because, you know, studying rocks on the screen doesn't make any sense. So Cork is a really, really beautiful city, really frank. I'm really comfortable. After, I think after COVID, this was the only course that came in in person for all of us who have been waiting at home studying back to colleges. I think this is a good time that you come on board with universities like this, which offer great courses, especially with great industrial placements and also alumni, which are diversified in place. So with that, uh, with my program, I would really put into words this, that mine is a very different program with all of the other engineering or food science programs. MSc Applied Environmental Geosciences gets on board with geology and environment. I'm not sure if any of the offers right now are going to be my juniors. If do, please to get in touch. I would be really appreciating if I could help any of you. And uh, yeah, UCC is great. Like you'll have great fun. Just make sure that you enjoy every bit of it when you're here. Meet your new people, make new friends, join all the societies, join the clubs. You will have your international groups as well. Everybody's really helpful. So to just sum up my experience, I would say it was just a blast with after COVID, I think. All open without uh, masks, seeing everybody seeing smiling. So yeah, I had fun. So I hope you guys have fun too. See you soon after the summer placements or summers, whether it's coming in December or January. Make sure, uh, get in touch with your previous seniors just to know how things work out in here, like with terms of uh, accommodation or what to carry, what not to carry. You will have a lot of us helping you all very soon in your international groups, on your WhatsApps or email chats. So hope to see you all soon in person. Thank you, Nessa. No, Nessa. <laughs> Good advice as well to kind of join the clubs and societies and get yeah. your kind of friends outside of just the just the academic side as well. I think kind of broadening your community really helps as yes, well. Yes, and yes. it's a great way just to kind of get to know different people or different sure. parts of the city too. Like, I think the major fact was that after COVID, everybody got out and everybody was really like, oh, we need to make new stuff. Like the two years experience was about to come back. So I think that was, I, I took a great decision coming back to UCC, like after COVID, in-person class was really amazing for me. Yeah. So I hope you guys have the same time in UCC. Um, yeah any queries <laughs> anything you can reach out in the chat box we'll help you out perfect um i'm going to pass over amruta if you're okay um amruta and i have a funny story actually from yesterday we've been trying to meet each other for about three months for a coffee and um between different things and different meetings we kept cancelling so eventually we met yesterday for a coffee and we realized i think our offices my office and your lab is maybe <laughs> it's maybe 15 meters Keep apart right. so <laughs> after all that time trying to find each other we were actually right beside each other so um i'm yeah. studying food science so i'm just going to pass over to amrita just to tell a little bit about your story uh and any advice at all you have for students be it uh, academic or the non-serious side is is very welcome too thanks nessa um uh, hi everybody and congratulations on your offer to ucc uh, I guarantee that you are going to have an amazing experience here. Uh, I'm doing my master's in food science and I had actually shifted from an undergraduate degree in microbiology to a completely different um, stream. So coming here, I was nervous and anxious about a lot of things, but I also had uh, very high expectations. And I should say that UCC definitely surpassed every single expectation that I had. And um, Cork is a beautiful city 
safety like everybody you know will say and it's the perfect blend of uh, a lot of nature as well as city life and ucc offers a really good blend of work life balance as well so it's uh, as long as you participate in societies clubs and a lot of other activities you're going to have a great time here not only with your academics but also with uh, your social life and you are going to get the chance to make a lot of friends a lot of contacts that will definitely help you in the long run uh, i know that a lot of you might have uh, queries and concerns about accommodations and the weather here and things like that but um, i assure you that in the end it's all going to get sorted out completely you're going to come here and have an amazing place to stay meet a lot of nice people and um, the campus you could actually stay in the campus all day it's it's so beautiful so um yeah i think uh, any other queries that you have you can connect on campus connect or you could ask one of the ambassadors as well we're always ready to help you out um, the faculty is amazing i can speak for uh, everyone when i say so every single department is they make sure to provide you uh with an amazing experience and uh, your classmates are going to be so welcoming uh, i think the transition from covid uh, pre pandemic to pandemic to post pandemic has been really really smooth with ucc uh, i'm so glad that a lot of things have uh, opened up now and we get the whole experience and i'm really excited for you all to come and experience that as well so feel free to ask us any questions we're there to help uh, thank you so much and congratulations again That's about it, Nessa. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, and we've got great advice again. Um, we're kind of getting. It sounds like the best university in the world with the way the two of you are selling it. <laughs> so um, I'm glad. I'm glad I didn't um, prep you because I probably would have got you to say nothing as impressive as what you said. So. Look, what I'm going to do is thank you so much for joining. And look, I know both of you are really busy. Um, so if you need to jump off, there's no problem at all, guys. Uh, Neve, I might pass over to you next because I know you're just dropping in for five minutes as well. Uh, just to give a kind of overview from your point of view and the graduate studies kind of support that's available as well. Is that okay? Perfect. Um, hi guys, my name is Neva Mahney. I am, I suppose, a little bit different to you at the moment. I'm actually a PhD student, but I did start off my journey as a master's. Um, I did my undergrad in UCC. It's my eighth year here, so I'm a bit of an expert. And I first registered as a master's by research. So I kind of understand what you're going through. That kind of, especially the ones by research who kind of have an idea of maybe moving into a PhD and kind of settling into that life. And then also a lot of people, particularly international students, in my experience, have come to UCC to do a taught masters in the hope that they get to transition into a PhD. Um, so I'll do a little bit of that at the end, but for the start, I'll just chat about kind of what we do. Um, I am the chairperson of the CEFS Postgraduate Committee, and I'm also co-founder of the UCC PG Council. Um, so there are two supports that are very much open to all of you if you need kind of like student guidance, an informal ear, just to chat about something and get some support. Um, and both those emails are available on the CEFS website. I recommend the PG Council at ucc.ie to kind of catch um, that's the most kind of open and like manned mailbox and then of course my email is also available if you have any specific questions and i've just added it to my name um on this so it's nevo mahani n o mahani at ucc.ie um so i'll go through a little bit of a spiel just so you kind of have an understanding of what it's like to be a pg in ucc however long you decide to stay and i suppose the biggest thing um that i have to say and i know the previous two ladies have said as well is really get involved in ucc you really want to embed yourself in the community that is ucc allow yourself to make friends join societies clubs like follow your interests there's so many opportunities in ucc with regards to societies and, and clubs um they're not just for undergraduate students they're also for postgraduate students and in fact most of those societies and clubs actually have a postgraduate representative role that you can get involved in as well um, get involved in is class rep stuff and committees and try and follow your interests it's such an opportunity to develop yourself outside of academia as well whenever you're in postgrad you probably have 
hard to believe, but you probably have the most time to like build your CV that you'll ever have again, especially in undergrad. I think people kind of get caught up in the academics or kind of put themselves in a tunnel of what they're able to do and what they're allowed to do. And this is really an opportunity to reinvent yourself as an adult to see what you'd like to do and what you want to see whenever you're done. So whether that's politics or that's camogie, <laughs> completely up to you. Um, I think another thing is postgraduate, whether it's by research or taught, is a very independent experience and you need to be very aware of what you want from your experience and make sure you assess that regularly. So right now it might be just, OK, I did an undergrad and I know I need a master's to go into the next level of my career, but allow this time in your master's to figure out what career you want and use the supports that are in place within UCC. So this, the career service, for example, could be a huge benefit for you and try and get involved in that as early as possible. I know we kind of have a habit in academia of saying, get through what you're doing now and we'll deal with everything else later. But if you can try and embed like the little things as you go along, just to make them as little intimidation as possible. Um, I know that's like a, the best advice I've gotten from my experience in PG. On that, I suppose it's important to know your supports. So whether that's your colleagues in your master's course that might be doing better at assignments and you want some feedback on how they're doing it, or if you're having trouble with the schedule that you have and you need to speak to the program coordinator, or if you're in a research position that you know who your supervisor is and you know who your advisor is and who's there to give you help when you need it or if you need it, um, that's really important to spend time doing just so if you ever do encounter a problem there's no panic about who do I talk to that you just know immediately who you need to go and speak to um, and on that I suppose something that whenever you're an undergraduate and even school we're very used to I know you probably won't believe undergraduates hand holding but hand holding in a sense it's important to understand the transition from undergraduate to postgraduate and the definition of a mentor that your supervisor on a research project or your boss on your placement or whatever your kind of a team lead is is a mentor they're not there to hold your hand they're more there to bounce ideas off and you really need to have the the friendships and the colleagues that enable you in your day-to-day -day life so that whenever you do need kind of bigger feedback you have your supervisor or your kind of manager or whatever your role might be if you're in industry as well for your placement to kind of get the bigger things so that they are there when you really need them um and i suppose just the last little bit i know i'm sure there's a couple people probably a very minority on this call who are uh, registered for a research masters but really want to do a phd so the biggest thing i'm going to have to say is please don't get caught up on funding while it's a valuable skill to be able to write a funding application and look for funding it can't detract from your research you need to prioritize the research and the funding will fall into place um it does your supervisor knows best and they'll know where to look for it so don't panic don't let it take over your life I allowed it to take over my first year my PhD a little bit too much when I was registered for a master's and my biggest lesson was just to focus on your research um, so that's everything if you have any questions please feel free to ask I know I spoke very quickly but uh, I didn't think everything was applicable to everyone so I wanted to just kind of fly through it <laughs> no that's great Neve. thanks a million and what I'll do is even when I'll um, circulate into the chat your email there address as well um, so look, great pockets of advice, but it's just good to see the length and breadth as well that is available, you know, to students, I think, before you start. It's very important to be aware of it. Um, so thanks, Neve. And look, if you feel free to drop off and I can kind of circulate your details afterwards as well. There's no problem if you're very busy today, I know. And thanks again. Uh, Gary, um, I'll pass over to you because I know I actually got all the students to fill out a poll uh, before we came on today. So we actually had 200 responses to the poll and I think about 70% asking about either accommodation or careers were the top two. So I have slides anyway, but I think you're the expert and much rather you cover it than me. So um, if you can just uh, give the kind of key bits of advice from your perspective, it'd be great, Gary. Brilliant. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. And uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. And, and congratulations on getting your offer. Um, so my name is Gary Mulcahy and I work in the Accommodation and Community Life Office. And we help all students get every type of accommodation that's available in Cork. And um, we provide advice and advocacy around um, all of these types of accommodation. It's, impo it's important to know that one person's accommodation may not suit the next person. So it's, it's quite hard 
to be general uh, sometimes we need to just uh, talk through what may suit you depending on your needs depending on your budget etc and um, but i'll do my best to give you an overview um, of the accommodation situation currently so we have four types of accommodation in cork we have ucc owned buildings which is about 1800 beds there's what we call privately owned student apartment complexes which is a, approximately 5,000 beds. So there's a lot more that are privately owned than are UCC owned. We have um, house shares, which is sharing uh, homes with other students. And we have living with families. Now, living with families can be difficult because particularly if you're an international student or if you're coming from the EU, a lot of families only want to take you for five days. Some will do seven days a week, some will do five days a week. So if you're looking at that type of accommodation, it's something to consider. Um, we don't necessarily recommend that you go into house shares with students if you're coming from abroad, because it's quite difficult to find that when you're not living in Cork or if you don't come over in advance. And of course, we want you to secure that accommodation before you come into the country or before you travel to Cork, and that's ideal. The last thing we want is for you to come you know, a couple of days before you're due to start your program and spend all of your time looking for accommodation. That's not ideal. So we try and help you find as much as we can, but the, really the research is up to you, okay? We, we, we need you to do most of the work and we'll um, support you going forward if you can't find anything. There are places available right now in the privately owned student complexes. That's really important to know, um, it, but that depends on your budget. Um, out of the 5,000 plus beds that are available uh, in the privately owned student uh, complexes, um, all of the ones on our website, and uh, NASA will, will, will um, send you the website that we have, there's a full list there, there's prices, there's proximity to, to the university. Um, all of those are, uh, are trusted by the university. There's absolutely no problem there. We've had numerous students going through there over the years. And um, so we would have no problem with international students or students not from Cork booking those accommodations, right? Um, uh, and that's very different than uh, booking a house that we wouldn't have any sight over, we would, wouldn't know the landlord, and we wouldn't know the people that you're sharing with. Um, those 5,000 beds, I mean, they do come at different prices. We, we, we feel that you should be coming with anywhere between 175 euros a week to 250 euros a week. That's about six and a half thousand to 10,000 euros per academic year. And the academic year stretches from the start of September to the end of May. Um, the, the currently available beds are at the higher price. They're at the 245 to 250 mark at the moment. There are places like Yugo, like Nido, like Scholarly, um, that will have uh, beds available. Uh, particularly Nido, I know, uh, and Yugo, um, you'll see them on our website. They do have places available right now. You can book them online and have your accommodation secured, but they are at that higher end of the market. Anything else that's lower end uh, in around the, maybe the 175 mark, uh, you may have to go on a waiting list. That's not ideal. Um, but our advice always, if you're on a waiting list, is to be proactive with the, with the company that you're dealing with. You know, contact them every week or two, make sure that they're, they, they keep you on that list. If something comes up in the meantime, you may be lucky enough to ring at the right time and you may get uh, a spot if somebody pulls out. Um, it, you know, we, we will help you, as, as I said, you, you do need to come and talk to us or email us, um, but you need to have that, um, that research done in advance. If you're coming with budgets that are very low, and when I say low, I mean 400 to 600 euros a month, um, which is 100 to 150 euros a week. It's not ideal. Very, very, very difficult to find accommodation at that price. So we don't recommend that you come over unless you can increase your budget. It's not impossible, but it is very, very difficult. And you could end up spending a lot of that accommodation budget on hostels or B&Bs while you try and find something at that price. Um, so that's not ideal. We do have an online accommodation search engine called Student Pad. You can, as a, as a UCC student coming in, you can apply to, to uh, have access to that. And you will see it on our website. Um, and we advertise 
um, house shares with other students and um, family um, houses as well, where families want to rent out a room. And just to make sure that you look at what they're asking for, whether they're asking for seven days, is it five days, is it uh, what is the rent, does that include bills, does it not include bills, that's very important because that could impact your budget at the end of the day, okay? Um, most accommodation really is 15 to 20 minutes walk from UCC. You may find that if you're coming at the lower end of the budget, that you might have to go out a little bit further. That's not a problem in Cork because there's a very good public transport system, or you might be able to cycle here in, in 20, 30 minutes. So don't discount um, houses or families um, that might have a room for you at your budget if it's a little bit further away. Um, what else did I want to say there now? Yeah, you know, it's 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 important to know that we ne we've never let anyone down, right? Everybody does get a place. Um, and I know for some people, the budget might be tight. You just need to engage with us, talk to us about it. We'll give you as much advice as we can, but really it's down to you to secure that accommodation. Okay, um, next we'll give you our, de our details. You can email us, you can contact us. If you want to call with us, that's absolutely no problem. We can talk it through with you. But please, if you're going to come over without securing accommodation, please consider that. We do not recommend it. Okay. That's it, Ness, I think. Unless Perfect. anybody has questions. Thanks, Gary. No, look, it's just very important practical advice. And the sooner you can try and get your accommodation sorted, the better. It also means for the first month to six weeks, you're not under that kind of pressure. You can actually enjoy the classes. You can get to know people. You're not trying to go around the city. The main problem that we see with Irish students, EU students, international students is when they don't get it organized ahead of time. And, and that's been completely honest. Yeah. And, and, and that was the right time though, because in, in, in three or four weeks time, when the Irish students are, are, are you know, figuring out where they want to go to college, it'll get much tighter and it, it, there may not be that availability. Exactly. And it just means that you can actually get on with your studies, have a really good start to your master's and actually be able to kind of focus on what you want to do and what you want to get out of it from the career services from that side and what Neve is advising, as opposed to spending the first few weeks in a bit of a panic and under pressure. We Absolutely. really would rather you have a much more positive start and experience to your master's than that, to yeah. be completely honest. You know, that's There's what we're going for here. Yeah, and there's just a question there around the campus accommodation. Like if if you are if you did apply to campus accommodation in the lottery, um, and you will still be on the list for any cancellations that happen until they are fulfilled. But the odds are very big. I mean, I would not, uh, or small, depends on what way you want to put it. But I wouldn't recommend that you put all your eggs in that basket at all. At all, uh, it will be very tough to get those beds. Um, because it, they're sought after and most people who do get them don't cancel them. Yeah, and the, because it is hard to get, so they're going to be holding on to them. So really just get as proactive as you can um, and just kind of put yourself in a position where you can actually really kind of start strong in the masters and enjoy the city and the campus life as well. What I've done there in the chat is I've shared a document. I'll circulate that out through CRM. So we'll go into everyone's account in your application system as well. There's key contacts, all of the links that Gary is talking about is all laid out there under accommodation, but also contacts for Discover STEM for myself, but also, you, you know, UCC, Ask UCC, so for more general queries. And we've admissions advice, part-time jobs advice, everything there. It's just a two-pager, but at least then over the next two to three months, you have everything you need. But again, with the accommodation, um, I, my advice is get going, as Gary would say. <laughs> Uh, get going now and it means then that we can have a bit more fun in September when you do arrive as well okay um Gary look feel free to drop off thanks a million and if any other questions come in I'll be answering some QA but I'll also circulate we won't have time to get through all the questions today so I'll be yeah. circulating a document out afterwards as well and I'll get your input into it if there's accommodation queries that you haven't covered okay great Thanks. Perfect. Thanks so okay, so look, um, I'm not introducing anyone else for a few minutes. Um, I'm actually just going to talk myself a little bit about uh, general supports and all of you filled out a form for this webinar asking specific questions as well. So I'm just going to share my screen. Um, 
And Gary, just because I can see your face up in it, I might get you to do me a favor and just make sure that you can see it there. You can just give me a thumbs up. I can see um, it. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> Thanks a million. So look, just today, obviously, you've heard it from most of the speakers. And today I want to cover off more of the general questions that came in, OK? And just a little bit about the campus and more of the general supports outside assess as well. OK, so you can see the beautiful campus behind me virtually and also here in the wildflower garden in the front of our main campus as well. OK, so it's a real beautiful, I suppose, part of university life here in UCC is the campus walking around. You'll always see some kind of beautiful pictures. Uh, we've over 22,000 students with over 4,000 international students. And uh, there's over 104 societies, uh, over 53 sports clubs. So we really want you to get out there. And that's another reason to have that accommodation sorted is so that you can actually go to the clubs and societies and make friends outside of your class from the start of the day as well. OK, um, we're Ireland's greenest campus. And from the College of Science, Engineering and Food Science, sustainability is hugely important to us. OK, it's a passion of all our university leaders. It's embedded in our college from the grassroots right up. And there's so many of the courses. Some of you have applied for sustainable energy, applied environmental geosciences, which is looking at hydrogeology problems. But we also have sustainability as part modules as part of a wide range of our masters, including food science as well. So right across the board, sustainability is a very important ethos to us, okay? Uh, there's a huge tradition of learning. So even though obviously there's lots of the kind of modern side of things, there's a huge tradition of learning here in UCC. Uh, George Boole was the first professor of mathematics. You obviously probably might've heard of him, Boolean algebra, the father of the information age. So look, so many key reasons to come travel here. They're just some of the kind of top line UCC facts to take home today. Uh, student support. I hope you've seen already today on the webinar how much support is available to you. Um, you can see Gary came on here in a really busy period just after getting the lottery out and is coming on and giving you advice. You can see me from the graduate studies, even all the students, you know, Samia and Amruta who are on today, they're offering their support and both of them volunteer for Campus Connect, um, which I hope you've all registered for, which is an online peer-to-peer -peer support. There's also the student well-being, IT services. There's also vice deans within the college. There's myself. There's so many college and staff within your schools, okay? Uh, the health services, well-being, general student life with the disability services, the career services. So right across the board, we're here to look after you. We're here to make sure that you can go from the acorn to the mighty oak and that we can prepare you for the workforce and also support you in that transition, okay? Quick overview, why STEM at UCC? For me, um, there's lots of reasons other than this, but I have to pick the top five. <laughs> so number one for industry engagement. Um, number one for research income in Ireland, we have over 24 STEM research institutes and centres. So as Sarah said when she opened the webinar today, you are learning from academics who are at the top of their field research-wise. Incredibly innovative. So you can become part of that research. You can see from Neve that the innovation is right from the start, you know, with some of the research masters as well. World's first green flag. I've covered off sustainability already. It's so important. Combating climate change is so important to our university and to our college. So it's very important as young people that you're choosing a university that is matching your ethos around sustainability as well. And I hope for some of you, the Irish audience, you know well, there's a huge amount of IT and tech companies here in Ireland, but there's also a huge amount of biotechnology pharmaceutical and food companies. So it's a great place to position yourself for your future career also, okay? Now, this is the key takeaways, just in case Gary got caught, I was going to cover off some accommodation queries, but again, that circulated in the chat, okay? All that form, all these links are available in that document, please download it. I'll circulate it out through CRM as well, but also again, you can see here, please do not arrive before you've secured accommodation. That would consistently the same advice we're giving. Just get it sorted now so you can kind of start as you mean to go on, okay? And again, the student pad links and the res services email that Gary mentioned as supports, they're all listed in that document as well. So please do download that, okay? 
Um, the international admissions advice, a number of you on the survey were just asking some kind of general queries. Um, so some of these apply to international students, but some of these apply to Irish and EU students as well. Please do look if you're looking in regards to applications and offers. The International Office website, which is included again in that document, again, those links, there's links there and they'll bring you to a lot of the information you might be looking for. For international students where a scholarship does apply, please be aware that it's going to be awarded at your offer stage in your full offer letter. If you have received a conditional offer, the scholarship is not awarded until the conditions of the offer are met, whether that's your final year transcripts or whether that's your English language. So if you're wondering why it's not listed, it's only when you actually meet the conditions of the offer. OK, um, deposits are non-refundable unless you refused your visa or unless you don't meet the conditions of your offer. OK, so there are the two cases where deposits are non-refundable payment to fees. We recommend the first installment is on the 1st of August. However, for some of the students here, I know for coming from different countries that you have to pay 50% of your fees up front to get your visa. And the visa process is really kicking off quite now, from now until kind of really June. So you'll probably have to pay them earlier depending on what country you're coming from, okay? Uh, payment of fees, we recommend transfer mate. In first and foremost, if you're having any difficulties with transformate, get in touch with me or get in touch with ask at ucc.ae, the email that's listed, okay, in the chat box in that document again. Um, if you're having any issues with transformate, get in touch with us and let us know. You can do it by wire transfer, but the reason we don't recommend that is that we have to actually manually process the receipts from wire transfer. So what can happen then is it's first come first served. So you might be looking for a receipt of fees for your visa at short notice, but it might take a week or two for that to clear or even longer. And then we're trying to process them manually as they come in. So as much as is possible, we are really recommending TransferMate as the way to actually use for your receipt. And please be aware that the TransferMate receipt is sufficient for visa purposes as well. Okay, for all students, international, Irish, EU, in August 2022, you will receive an email for registration. Do not worry, you're not going to receive it before that. It will be in August, okay? You will be sent your student ID and you'll be sent instructions of how to register as well. OK, so if you're worried that you haven't got that yet, you're not going to be getting it until August. OK, just to let you know. Part time jobs is the next section. We had a lot of questions actually about this, so I just kind of gathered some actual advice. Some of the advice is UCC advice and some of the advice is just my own advice as well. OK, all of this is included in the document as well. So another reason to download it. Sorry, I keep saying that, <laughs> but it's the best advice. Um, so UCC advice, there's a link there for that. Register and Careers Connect after enrollment. For those of you as well, there's a huge amount of kind of service industry jobs. So working in a cafe, working in a shop. So it would be my advice if it's available to do a barista course at home so that you can kind of be making coffee. There's a lot of kind of cafe work at the moment. Set up an alert on LinkedIn um, for part time jobs in Cork. Uh, there's also and they'll kind of send you alerts maybe the month before you're coming of different part time jobs. You can work up to 20 hours per week during term time. Um, depending on your preferences, and I just want to be completely honest, it varies from student to student whether they may be capable of taking on a part time job or not. OK, and I want to give you very genuine advice. Maybe if you're coming from another country and you're quite intimidated and, you know, it's your first month in a new country, maybe starting a part time job in those first few months is not a good idea. If you're doing a big transition into a new course or a new field, for example, I know with Amruta uh, transferring from microbiology into food science, taking on a part time job at that time probably wasn't going to be a good idea for her. OK, whereas if you feel that you're kind of moving into something and you may be able to take on hours, then it could work for you. Just be very aware to try and put your studies first and make sure that the job you're going to interview for part time wise employers are flexible. For the most part, employers are, but you need to make that very clear from the start that, you, that your studies are your priority. 
And the last bit of advice I have on that is set up alerts on local job boards. Irish jobs, particularly Cork jobs.ie, will have a lot of part-time work, glassdoor.ie and monster.ie. And look, if you do have any questions, just message me or email me afterwards. I know you most of you have my number or my email anyway. Okay, but that's just my general advice. And again, that's listed in the document. Okay. Um so the second point after accommodation for the most popular queries was careers, okay? Where every most of the students who filled in, over 150 students wanted to hear more about careers. To give you the most amount of time so that you can hear properly about, first of all, the amazing UCC career services and what they offer, we're going to run a separate webinar, okay? It's June 15th at 12 o'clock. Um, my colleague Brenna is going to pop in the pop in the link actually into the chat today. So you can register now straight away for it. My advice is please join us. You're going to hear all about the career services, advice on interview workshops. They have amazing AI technology to support you before you even start your master's. We're also going to hear from industry and alumni on that day. Uh, my background is actually recruiting technical staff across the EU and internationally. So I'll be talking a little bit from my perspective as well about advice and companies, and we'll be opening up all different industries as well. Okay, separate to that, we, for offer holders from the School of Computer Science over so data science, um, data science, computer science, and the interactive media masters will be running a standalone support webinar that will be running on June 7th or 8th, which I will circulate out as well. Okay, so we have a couple of other events I just want you to keep an eye out for. Please do register for these because even if you can't make it on the day, we had 300 registrations today. I can circulate the recording to you all afterwards as well. So even if you're stuck time-wise, don't worry, I'll be recording these and circulating them, okay? So do register for this. But a quick touch on this is, you are all asking where do our graduates go? And I am quite honestly delighted to say it's incredibly broad. You can see right across the board, some of the huge pharma giants. So Visor, you've heard in the news about the vaccine, uh, Dupuy and Janssen, they're part of the Johnson & Johnson family. There's multiple sites within 15 to 20 minutes at either side of Cork City. You have the ITC, VMware, the European headquarters of Apple is centered in Cork City. You have food as well. So Danone, Glambia, uh, Kerry Group. These are huge food giants in the industry players and they're international players, okay? Uh, marine and energy. Um, obviously there's some engineering houses, financial services. So it's so broad where our graduates go. And again, if you have particular questions about your course and the opportunities, I'm more than happy to jump on a quick call with you as well, okay? With regards to the life sciences and biotech sector, the reason I want to flag this today is a lot of people are often very surprised about this. So Ireland internationally and within Europe has a huge kind of, I suppose, reputation for the tech sector and the ID sector. Dublin is known as the Internet of Things. And um, so there is, I suppose, sometimes a lack of awareness of how much work is available in the pharma and biotech sector. OK, and you can see here Cork, where we're situated down at the south, is the most amount of pharmaceutical and biotechnology jobs. And I, what I want to make you aware of when I'm pointing this out is that they're hiring engineers, they're hiring scientists, they're hiring data scientists, they're hiring financial services if you're doing a mathematics degree. So it's not just the traditional engineering and scientific degrees like the chemistry degrees and the biotechnology degrees, they're hiring right across because they have their shared service centers centered here as well, okay? So they're hiring from a finance point of view, they're hiring right across the board as well. So a huge amount of opportunities there. So don't be just thinking, if it was your original thought that it's just tech opportunities or IT companies, okay? But again, obviously it would be silly for me not to acknowledge that the tech sector is huge here in Ireland. A lot of people know of Dublin as the technology hub, but we have a huge tech set cluster here in Cork as well. And there's great expansion going on along the port as well. So Ireland is really, I suppose, known as the Silicon Valley Europe. So great career opportunities in this field, okay? 
So I'm going to finish up shortly because I want to just make sure I have a couple of time for any questions that come in as well. So even and I'm going to release a poll just where I want to make sure that you could answer the poll so that we can get an indication of really what you want to hear from us next, what supports might you want next as well. OK, so STEM community and the STEM and you, it's a huge piece and why I want to finish in it, it's quite important to us, okay, that you belong to the UCC community, but you also belong to the wider STEM community as well, okay, we have amazing societies, the Y STEM Society, the Engineering Society, the Graduate Studies Society, there's loads of different options you can join. Our staff are amazing, they're very supportive, and I think that's a really important piece coming and starting a master's, is that you are belonging to that community, no matter where you did your undergrad from, you're going to be part of the UCC and CEFs community, okay? So look, feel free to pop in questions into the Q&A section, um, just as I'm finishing up here, and we'll come and address them. I mightn't have time to address every question that comes in, um, but what I'll do is I'll circulate a document with all the questions that were asked, and we can cover everything off. And just to finish off, my last slide is just to kind of recap why to kind of come and study at our amazing college here in University College Cork. And really, for me, you've heard it straight away from Sarah, the research is amazing. There's amazing amount of centers, activity, so many broad strands of research happening here, and a lot of multidisciplinary research as well. Career opportunities, it's amazing career opportunities. We've talked about the industry and we're the number one university for industry engagement. Sustainability, it's embedded in our university, it's embedded in our college, it's something we are really proud of and really want to make a difference nationally, at a European level and internationally. And that leads me to no matter what STEM degree you're studying, as Sarah mentioned at the start, we have multiple different master's degrees. But what you're getting to do with a STEM degree, whether it's in data science, whether it's in food science, whether it's in engineering, you're getting to make a difference, OK? You're getting to get, make a difference to problems that we're facing in society, like climate change, like food shortages, OK? And you're making a difference to a community. And hopefully I've shown you that once you get here, you really will belong to a community at both UCC level and also a STEM level, OK? So thank you all so much for joining me today.